Well, this is going to be one of the best rock records of 2023. Extreme is back. They got a brand new record called Six. Coming out on June 9th. Available now for pre-order wherever you get your music. The latest single, Rise. Music video already has over a million views on YouTube. It's fantastic. I caught up with Gary Sharon. You can get the entire interview wherever you stream podcasts. In this part, I just want to play you. We have an entire discussion about his time in Van Halen. And Gary reveals that, yes, there is, in fact, a follow-up to Van Halen 3 that will probably never see the light of day. And he actually reconnected with Edward in the mid-2010s. And he actually recorded a fresh vocal for a couple of old demos that he discovered that Ed wrote. And Ed didn't even remember he wrote. This is a fantastic interview with Gary, a good friend of the show. And make sure you pre-order Extreme's brand new record, Six. It's coming out on June 9th. Available pre-order wherever you get your music. Here's Gary Sharon talking about his time in Van Halen. I mean, it must have been a real school of rock being in the studio with that man every day. Yeah, it was it, it was so funny. Um, you know, to summarize, you know, you get you make me think there's so many stories. Uh well, I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have time. I, I will say that when I and I've said this before, when I when I joined the band, they did make me feel welcome. Uh, I remember that first day. All I knew, I knew Michael from the past. Mm. So I, I I would look at him and uh, you know, when we when when we went into 5150, it was in the afternoon, you know, you wanna sing. I'm like, can I go to the bathroom? You know. Uh, right. uh, you're gonna uh, hype yourself up in front of that mirror. Yeah, like that. and I, I remember, you know. Uh, what do you want to do? I, I had to learn six songs. So I said, let's start with the Dave stuff. It's in the afternoon, my voice. And it was great. And, uh, and then we, then were they we, excited to play the Dave stuff again? Yeah. I think that they, I thought, uh, well, they gave me the songs. I, I forget. Um, obviously it was Panama. I don't know. Uh, somebody give me a doctor. No, no, it wasn't that. I pulled all that stuff out during rehearsal really oh yeah yeah they were ready to play the hits and you were like no i I want to go deep actually in in rehearsal it was alex who said to me what was so what do you want to do and i go well i want to do stuff that you guys haven't haven't done before because if anything's gonna if anything's gonna endear me to the van halen audience would be old you know old material sammy for years only did you know three or four of the dave stuff and I understand that because they were peers, you know, but me coming in a little younger, uh, there was that separation, um, you know, grow, growing up in the Dave stuff, extreme doing their thing during the Sammy, Sammy era. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to me, it was, um, you know, what haven't you done? I knew what Sammy did and even, even uh, uh, humans being. Uh, right. That was something that I suggested, and they were like, "Well, we never did that." So, uh, I'm the one. All that stuff, and they got a kick out of it. And actually, they like Joe Perry. They had to go back and listen <laughs> to that stuff. So Van so, Halen had to go re relearn Van Halen. Yeah, and now again, you know, I was a kid in a candy store doing doing that material, mm-hmm. and. Um, and then at the end, you know, and then there was, when I left, uh, uh, I was out of touch with them. Always, always remained friends with them. But with Van Halen, it's a very tight circle. So once I was out, we kept in touch for a few years, but then lost touch. I reached out to him in like 2015, uh, just out of the blue mm-hmm. uh, in, an e- in an email. And he, he responded right back. We immediately uh, hooked up next time I was in L.A. And it, we, we picked up where we left off. It was wonderful. It, it, was, it was great because if anything, uh, you know, it, it, was, it, it, was nice. it was nice to know that we picked up where we left. It, it, he, was a, he was a brother to me. Mm-hmm. You know, we were, we were very close those, those years. So... Uh, you know, not to get into the the, the end, but uh, mm-hmm. um, that that was sad. Right, very sad. 
Well, it's nice to know that you reconnected towards the end and you were able to rekindle that friendship. I mean, at the end of the day, I I think everybody's kind of realizing, like, yeah, it's competitive and whatever, and everybody kind of has falling outs. But I think it's your bros and you, you had a relationship for quite some time. And it's like, yeah. it's, it's it's nice to reconnect with an ex like 10 years later and say, yeah. oh, how you been? And that's what it was. And and that, that that's what it was. We, we talk music and, you know, we brought up some old times. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Uh, I forgot. It'll come back to me. Um, yeah. But at the time, I mean, you know, when you were recording Van Halen 3 in that record, I mean, everybody talks about it today. Like, I'm, I'm such a fan of that album because it, to me, it sounds like Eddie, like to the core. Like, you know, all those songs and the guitar, like everybody talks about it as like almost being Ed's solo record in a way. But, so let me ask you, because I talked to Mikey about this and he sort of told me an answer. But I want to hear your answer. So yeah. how much of that album was actually like all Eddie, like Eddie on drums, on bass, on guitar? Like how much of the record is Eddie performing? Uh, he did a few. He did a few drums uh, and bass. Um it was a it was a weird time when I came in there. There was there was some dysfunction going going on. Like Mikey said, I I, I think I heard your um, your interview with him, or I read read some things on on three. Yeah. Um, you know, when I look back on I look back on three, and I'm like, uh, my first thing is I wish that's one of that's one of the records that should be remixed. Mm. because i think it's a harsh record to listen to i i look back on it um if if the sounds were better um some of those songs some of those songs would have been uh, received more uh, received better i agree um, cuz i think there's some great songs on that record and as far as eddie it's not it wasn't a solo record i think it was he was um i think our writing partnership was different than the other guys in the sense that I would I would show him a lyric. It was the first time he would write to a lyric. He said oh, wow. he never did that. That's something me and Nuno did uh, forever. But that was something new for him, which inspired him in different directions. He would sit on a piano. Um, he would just, he had all this material that, yeah, I can only speak for myself. I think with, with uh, you know, the Sammy era, um, not that there was pressure from the record company. I think they did what they did, but they were, they knew who they were. With, with me coming into the fold, we were discovering who we were. We were doing, you know, year to the day was something, something, you know, uh, bluesy not that he didn't do anything bluesy but i thought that was a little song like once or from afar this shit was like from left field and you know i approached is speaking of alice cooper from afar i approached that music i go oh this is this is something between this is like uh this is thematic i, I can see cooper doing something you know uh or even floyd so I think he was free in the sense that uh, uh, he could try things different with me. And, mm -hmm. and I wasn't, you know, here I am. I'm the new kid. I'm the new kid coming in. Uh, I was almost a, a, a new toy for him. It's like, let, let me show you this. And yeah. I'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, who was I to, who was I to say, you know, I'm, I I'm in the presence of uh, the king here. Yeah. yeah, and I think for him as well, it was like, you know, a fresh set of ears and like a new sort of person to come in and like like a new lease on life almost in a sense. Like, you know, somebody that could actually, you know, he could explore ideas with that wouldn't necessarily, you know, judge like, oh, that's not commercial sounding enough or this and that. It's like he could just be free to be Ed. Yeah, I think that was the case. And not to compare it to Fair Warning, but I think Fair Warning in the Dave era was, was Eddie taking a little bit more control uh, and trying some different things. That record was darker and it was a little more elaborate, I think. Um, yeah. And Three Sides, I think it was a, a new birth for him. Uh, I, you know, regardless of how it ended um, with the Sammy, with Sammy, I think uh, um, we hit it off, we hit it off uh, right away. And I saw, 
he was inspired. So he tried some things. Now, in retrospect, should have, uh, you know, Mike Post, great guy. Was he the right guy for that band? And if we had like a Fairburn uh, or someone there, could that record have been kept on the tracks a bit more and not been so eclectic? You know, for me, coming out of Extreme, that was Extreme. Extreme was always that. Uh, so, so to do different things, I, w- I was like, yeah, let, you know, I wasn't going to say no. But in retrospect, you know, maybe, uh, maybe if there was a different producer, um, it might have been more in that in that strike zone. Would have been more focused and production yeah. wise, it just would have been more, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Ed's not here anymore, unfortunately. And like, you know, Mikey just did an interview recently where he's talking about how a lot of the songs for the follow up record were really, really good. So now, is, is there any truth to this? I mean, is is there a second Van Halen three sitting in the vault somewhere? Like, how much stuff did you guys write and record? Now, th- now that that's funny because if if uh, it at this point it would never live up to the hype. So, um, but it yeah. exists. Oh, it exists. Yeah, yeah. There's some demo. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of music, uh, in in different uh, degrees of being finished sometimes it was just a riff a drum machine and a and a rough vocal Mm -hmm. and then there was uh you know we worked with patrick leonard for a couple songs um wow uh that that were finished and then other songs uh uh alex and michael we would we would jam we would jam in uh there's one song that's funny uh the working title was rivers wide and i think a piece of piece of music didn't make it on a different kind of truth mm. there's a couple there's a couple of uh pieces of music on on the last vh record that were demos that uh, uh that i did with uh vh at that time wow um that uh, you know again there's a part of me would love love some of that stuff to see the light of day uh just just to go uh just to go hey man there there was uh actually it was better than the it was better than the uh vh3 i think mm-hmm. i think it was a combination of you know v i've always said you know i came into the band and we recorded the record it would have been great if i came into the band and toured with the band and did did both catalogs, the Dave and Sammy, and then come back because when after that tour, we were a band. You know, uh, we we sang we sang the the VH3 songs better. So when we were go, we were doing those demos, uh, you know, I think it was more focused, and and maybe maybe subliminally it was because of the reception of the record, and we we wanted to make something a little bit more down the strike zone. Right. Yeah. So how many songs do you think are sitting around like that you completed? Oh, I can't give you that information, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'll tell you this. Um, well, look, I mean, at the end of the day, they're probably never going to come out. Maybe they will, you know, 10 years from now when they finally remaster everything and some bonus tracks, but it's like, I, and I hate them when like fans that, you know, they're going to hear this. They're going to feel like, Oh, we got to get those songs or, but it's like, well, that's why I don't, that's why I don't like to talk much about it because yeah i I never want to exploit that no Uh, that that story's been out there's material um uh you know again again i i I hold that period of time with reverence yeah you know eddie's past um i'm reluctant to speak about it because it's it's a headline if i do if i do a if i do an interview about uh you know, extreme or whether it was hurt smile. And they asked me one question about Van Halen. That's the, that's the subject. Yeah. You know? And then blabbermouth goes and spins the headline and then everybody right. looks terrible. Right. <laughs> you know, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, maybe, maybe someday. Did you ever take any of those ideas you had with Van Halen and turn them into extreme songs over the years? Oh yeah. Yeah. Actually a lot of, a, a lot of the lyrics, a lot of the rough, 
demos. I think I did a Tribe of Judah record uh, in 2002 or something. Um, took some of those lyrics and uh, um, yeah, but there's, you know, some of that, some of that stuff is, have, uh, has been sitting in, sitting on my computer right here. I'll play you one right now. No. Let's hear it. Going off the air. We'll be right back, everybody. With my <laughs> mouth on the floor. <laughs> I got a few on my phone. Next time I see you, I'll play you something. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Love it. When, when's the, here's like an out of field question. Man. When was the last time you recorded a vocal for Eddie Van Halen? Like once you reconnected back in 2015 or whatever it was. Oh, you're, you guys, you're, you're smart. Did you guys ever, you know, get together in the studio and cut some stuff right together? Well, where, where's this question come from? Just, you, I'm just curious because, you know, two musicians that used to work together get together and for a hang. Something's going to come out of it. That's just the artist in you. Yeah, uh, well, um, it was uh, it was one of the times I was... I was up there and I, uh, I, um, I, I had a, I, I don't know, I was cleaning out my, uh, cleaning out my closet and I had a bunch, there's a bunch of CDs and I found, a, I completely forgot about it. It was a, it was a demo at, at that time. And it actually, it was one of the, maybe not the first thing he showed me, but we were, you know, we were at three or four songs into it. Um, he played me this thing that that was a working title called Four on the Floor. It was a driving kind of ZZ Top classic, almost, uh, you know, got a, had a little Panama in it, right? I was going to say it's got like a, maybe like a 1984 era yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah, I don't know when. He, I think he wrote it in the Sammy era, but um, it was sitting there and I'm looking at what the what the hell is this? And I pulled the CD out and I played it. And this is, um, I, I saw, um, I saw him uh, maybe a few months before. I don't know when I wrote it. Actually, I wrote it later, um, but I pulled it out and um, there was actually two songs and uh, I just wrote to them. And, and when I, when I reconnected with them, I played him one of them and uh and he dug it. And uh, I said, There's, here's another one. It was the four on the floor one. I go, I'm, I think I want to write to this. And he goes, oh, send me that. I'm playing this song to him. He had no recollection of it. He had wow. No he didn't remember writing it. No, no. And uh, so, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't either. Uh, I didn't even, I, I don't even remember, you know, th that's how, that's how much material he had. And uh, that we, you know, we shelved it. I think we shelved it because he came up with something else and we were hot on that. And I had a lyric for it and we wrote that. And we never got back to it. So here's what, 25, 25 years later. Yeah. Oh, well, well, it was about I don't know, 20, 20 at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that was, so there's, um, so when you, your question, did we write anything indirectly? Indirectly, yeah, I wrote to something recently. It was just for, it was just for fun. Yeah. Um, but I did play it for him, and uh, he liked it. So that's all that matters to me. Listen, on the next extreme record, you got to get Nuno to do his best Eddie impression. And just try and you know, use that riff, use that song. That's funny. Credit uh, Ed, we're done. To, to me, all to me, all that stuff is sacred ground. You know? Absolutely, yeah. You know? So uh, again. Who knows? Who knows? I have to talk to Alex. He's the boss. Yeah. Have you spoken to Alex at all lately? Or no, no, I haven't. One of the guys. I see Michael. I I keep in touch with Mike. Mm -hmm. um, no, and that's for no other reason. You know, he's he's Mister Aloof. You yeah. know, and he, hey. how about you know he's one of those guys. Uh, you know, rare interviews. Rarely you see him, and. Uh, yeah, he keeps he he uh, he he keeps that the distance. Yeah, yeah. And hey, I, he's I, earned it. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. he doesn't need to do interviews. He doesn't. Do, he's worked his. He did his time. He's he's good. All he has to say is all he has to do is play the music. That's 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 him speaking. Yeah, you know. 
And you yeah. know what? That's that's a good way to look at it. Play the music. Let the music do the talking. Yeah. And at the end of the day, all these interviews, even the, the stuff we're doing, the only thing that's going to last, I remember, you know, when I, I, a big Stones fan and all the, yeah, or the or a Who fan, you hear all the all the stories, all the backstage stories, the hotel stories, you know, or or whatever, you know, pissing on airplanes and yeah, and all that stuff. All that people sh- orgies doing blow yeah. off asses. And, all know. that shit goes by the wayside. All you have is all you have is the record records. All you have is the music. That's that's the legacy. And in the, at the end of the day, that's with extreme too. Um, it's the music, you know. These all this stuff is going to be forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, um, we went way over the time we were supposed to. Uh, this is this has been awesome. Uh, Extreme's latest record, Six, coming out on June 9th. You could pre-order it now wherever you get your music. Are you doing the vinyls, the CDs, yeah, the whole yeah, we're thing? Yeah, doing the vinyls. Uh, it's coming out, what, June, uh, June 9th? Or June, June 9th, 6th? yeah. Okay, and uh, we'll have a couple more videos out, singles out before that, uh, at least at least three, maybe four. Um, we're excited. I think the record will not disappoint. Of course, it took us 15 years. We wanted to break the uh, Chinese democracy. Uh, <laughs> wanted to break so, the record with your record. <laughs> yeah, we broke that record. But uh, um, I think we're, I think we're going to please the extreme fans and actually make some new fans. It's It's funny. I'm seeing all the reaction videos. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of younger fans that they're like, Extreme has a new single out, Rise. Um, I never heard of this band. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, uh, it's, it's amazing how this day and age, like social media, it'll just put you in front of a whole new audience, you know? Yeah, which is great. Which is great, man. Jeremy, yeah. it's good. Uh, I'm a fan of you. You're, you're a great musician in your own right. And uh, well, thank keep, you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I watch you from afar. Well, you know. I appreciate that. And, yeah. uh, you know, I uh, love connecting with you on socials. You're one of my favorite singers of all time. I'm a fan, as you can tell. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. The, the love and respect is mutual. So there yeah. you go. You, Gary, you've said it all. You've said it all. I appreciate it, man. We'll talk again. Uh, yep. And, uh, yeah, keep up the good work, brother. And I'll see you on the road. An all-new episode of The Jeremy White Show, Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it.